Either the Chevrolet Trailblazer got really small or I got really tall. Downsizing is a huge thing in the auto industry, but what Chevrolet is doing with the Trailblazer nameplate is on a whole different level. I mean, this nameplate really started out as something the size of an Explorer. And I remember they brought it into the Philippines from the United States, and it had a big 4.2 liter straight six. A friend of mine had one. Actually, I think he still has it. Now, Chevrolet canceled that model, and then they switched to a Thailand-made Trailblazer. That was a totally different model because it was a PPV, a pickup passenger vehicle. Now, as you know, those are very popular in Southeast Asia and particularly the Philippine market. That's why we have models like Fortuner, Terra, Montero Sport, MuX, and Everest, but no longer the Trailblazer. But the cancel culture over at GM seems to be a big thing because not only did they cancel the Trailblazer nameplate in Thailand, they actually sold the factory that made it along with the Colorado. So that Trailblazer is no more. So Chevrolet Philippines had to pivot because one of their biggest models that they sold in the Philippine market is now being lost and it's kind of beyond their control. So TCC CCCI went over to another sourcing for the Trailblazer. And that's how we ended up with a Korean-made model. And yes, this is very different. This is no PPV. If you look underneath, you will not find a frame that the body is bolted on. This is a unibody, a crossover. Now, when you look at the front, yeah, the design really kind of wins you over because I can honestly, and many of us I'm sure will try to bash this uh, vehicle to high heavens because of the change in philosophy of use with this vehicle. But when you start judging it for what it's trying to accomplish, then it kind of really starts to win you over. I mean, with the look, the split headlamps, I mean, this kind of is kind of really popular right now in a lot of crossovers and even MPVs. But what the design really reminds me of is a Citroen Cactus. We'll try to pop in an image of that over there uh, so you can kind of see the similarity with the front, particularly when we go over to the side. Now from this side, you can see some of the details that make it rather different. I mean, the black cladding, of course, the black wheels with the Continental tires is pretty good. But remember what I said about the Citroen Cactus? Well, you can see it with the side especially, particularly with the C-pillar. The way that looks is very, very unique. Now, let's have a little fun with this and do the dimensions. At 4.4 meters long, this is about half a meter shorter than the Trailblazer it replaced. That was 4.9. In terms of width, this is around 1.8 meters wide. Even though the brochure, I think, says around 2 meters, I measured. It actually, the measurement they were doing probably included the side mirrors. So uh, the previous one was around 1.8 body for the body size. In terms of height, this is, I think, 1.65 with the roof rails, which is why even with my height at 168 cm, I'm a little bit yeah, higher than this. The previous one was around 1.85. Of course, I'm being facetious with the model uh, because yes, this is a totally different approach to the Trailblazer name. Uh, even at 4.4 meters, this is smaller than a Honda CRV. And I'm talking about the first generation one. The latest generation CRV dwarfs it. Now, for the back, well, not really much to talk about. It does have the black trim over on, on either side to give it that floating roof effect along with the A-pillars. I mean, with the back, it's a regular five-door crossover with a nice black lower bumper and the silver uh, skid pad there, skid plate, however you want to call that. Trailblazer neatly spelled out. And you have the name of the model, of course, is the Premier. And being the Premier, it also has a neat feature, the motorized tailgate, which is kind of strange because Normally, you reserve features like this for much larger SUVs, but this one has it. When you do open it up, it does have a nice cargo area. Currently, the measurements of this is about 32 inches from here up to the back of the rear seats. It's about 54 inches wide uh, for these cutouts, but normally you'd put something around 40 inches wide uh, between the wheel arches. That's kind of the thing here. The, the cargo floor is actually two tier. You can lower it down or you can keep it as it is because in this configuration, when you see, I kept it locked. There you go. Kept it locked. When you do that, it creates a fold flat space for cargo. Now, in this configuration, the space grows to, well, the length grows to 
around 55 inches all the way the supported part it can go up to 62 inches if you have something hanging over there before the front seats but it's a pretty big cargo area all things considered one thing strange though this one does have a slot for a tunnel cover but for some reason this one does not have it the first thing that really screams at you when you open the engine bay of the trailblazer is not the engine but that heat shielding there and the reason is this is a 1.3 liter turbo engine meaning that heat shield is supposed to prevent the heat from the turbo and the turbo manifold from getting into the engine bay and making things uncomfortable this was a three cylinder turbo it makes 155 horsepower and 236 newton meters of torque it's bolted onto a cvt and it's purely front wheel drive there is no all-wheel drive option so if you have any dreams of off-roading or going on the trail this is not going to be the car for you this is going to be something more for urban driving so let's take it out to the city and drive step into a 22 trailblazer because yes you know you're walking into a smaller vehicle but even when you recalibrate your expectations that you are walking into a smaller car it somehow still feels smaller than that now granted the back seat though is kind of spacious which is nice um, the floor there is kind of flat so it's it's easy to you know move your feet around there no problem but here in front the seats are a bit on the narrow side um, the windowsill is a bit high the dashboard is kind of high I mean I'm at, I'm at the lowest seating uh, adjustment now so it does feel like I'm sitting low which I do kind of like but it feels nice and cocooned in here you know which is kind of a good thing you feel kind of protected by by everything which is kind of what you want out of a crossover Power from the three-cylinder engine is actually pretty good. It doesn't take a lot to get you going. I mean, you find a little gap, you apply a little throttle pressure, and yeah, it kind of nicely surges forward, gives you that boost. It can be quite addicting. Now, uh, when it comes to fuel economy, it's actually really good too, because even without really trying, it's easily getting around nine, over nine kilometers per liter city driving. Even on the highway, it improves to around 15 or more than 15. I was having a bit more fun with it on the highway because yeah the, the surge the boost does get addictive and it is fun to play around with. even steering is actually quite nice now it's not super direct hydraulic style power steering it's electronic power steering but it is uh, quick to respond which I do like and the handling and the body control of the vehicle is good though do expect that you will feel more of the road because the suspension is clearly geared towards uh, better handling rather than outright comfort. The audio system on this one I do like. It's the, the MyLink system. Uh, it's this touch screen here and it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, USB, yeah, all that stuff. Even has an auxiliary port, the, the old school 3.5 uh, millimeter jack. Yeah, it has it down there. Speakers, you've got six. Uh, one for all doors, well, except for the fifth door. There are two speakers or two tweeters uh, on the A pillars, so it gives you nice quality audio quality. Um, your AC is a climate control unit, which is actually pretty cool in the city, even now with no tint. There are a few things that I like about the 22 Trailblazer, but the things I don't like, these are actually quite glaring. For instance, the rear seat. Now, I did mention it is spacious, and it actually is. But there are qualities about the rear seat that really need work. For one, there's no center armrest. There are no, uh, there's no charging. There's no 12 volt or USB charging ports in the back. There are no AC vents in the back. But uh, the bigger thing I think is more about the cup holders because normally a lot of cars have cup holders in the back, plenty. But this one, none, just bottle holders on the doors. That's it, which is kind of strange because they fitted the rear seats with the seat heaters, so you may not be able to have a drink, but you'll have a nice and warm seat in our tropical climate. But don't get me wrong though, the Trailblazer is a nicely loaded vehicle. I mean, you get things like the six airbags, uh, the AEB with pedestrian detection, cruise control, 
um, you have the forward collision warning you also get the pedestrian detection by the way so it detects a pedestrian and uh, even brings the vehicle to a full stop using the AEB it also has torque vectoring and even rollover protection I find that kind of weird because if you roll over a vehicle this low you really kind of messed up the strange thing about the Chevrolet Trailblazer actually you can find when you look at the spec sheet and the brochure of this you know like when you flip to the back and you see all the specs when you look at that you realize it's kind of the Filipino tendency when you let's say go to a family gathering and you bring a an eight-piece bucket of chicken for example that's your ambag and then um, the moment you put it down on the buffet table on the dining table you know all your titas hover over it and then they start chopping each and every one to you know two or even three pieces sometimes you know their their logic is para dumame that's kind of what the brochure of the trailblazer looks like to me because you find a lot of things there that you would never find in brochures from other brands i mean things like brake pre-fill or fading brake assist i mean car makers don't really list that anymore uh, and even the sensor it senses when you have the mini donut spare fitted to one of the wheels it'll somehow recalibrate the brakes i mean you don't really need to list that anymore in most modern cars but somehow they did it with this one but the more you look at the spec sheet you notice things that should be there for the price point but aren't like sunroof you look at that uh, nothing there uh, the driver's seat adjustment it's the manual not the electrical type there's no auto brake hold their cruise control is the regular kind not the adaptive kind even the instrument cluster is not a full digital screen it's still the more standard type with the multi-info display in the middle and mind you the multi-info -in display of this looks kind of dated it's still monochromatic not the full digital screen I came into this review with an open mind because I think the Trailblazer deserves a better rep than it has now. I mean, a lot of people making fun of it and stuff like that. And the people over at Chevrolet, they're good people. They're good friends of ours. And uh, they deserve a vehicle that they can really market to their customers because after they lost the factory, or at least GM lost a factory in uh, Thailand that supplied the Philippines with you know Trailblazer in Colorado, they lost two of their strongest products. But there are things here that really need attention, that really need to be pointed out. Now that we're parked, let me take you around the dashboard from my point of view. Because right now, uh, the steering wheel I really do like because the leather on this, if it's fake leather, it's really good because it has the imperfections. It's probably real leather and it does feel nice. But the issue I think here are the way parts fit together. I mean, of course, here on the doors, like right here, that's plastic, that's normal. But when you look at the way things fit together, like here, this one, from my vantage point, the, the fit of this to this isn't great. Same when you go down here, because the fit of this, uh, it may not show up on camera, but it's like not really great. But I think the biggest issue is right here, because when car makers design dashboards and the door cards, things are supposed to line up perfectly and they have this little surface here and the line here that kind of supposed to meet right there but the gap from that is not really yeah it's great and see that gap there so that's not fantastic it's the same with the other side and when you go up to here you see a whole gap that you can kind of fit your finger through which is kind of weird so those are just some of the things that I think Chevrolet should really work on. I do have to make a correction though. Before they launched this car here, we thought they were going to get it from China from Saic GM. Just like the Chevrolet Tracker that they also recently launched in the market. But that wasn't the case. Uh, they corrected me on that. This is from GM Korea, which is kind of weird because if it was Saic GM, then I look at the build quality things that I found. It's like, okay, yeah, par for the course. But for GM Korea, it's like, well, Korean products are leveling up when it comes to quality. Because that's what we see with Hyundai and with Kia. And then I remembered, GM Korea used to be Daewoo.
The Chevrolet Trailblazer is definitely interesting, particularly from a design point of view, because it really does look good. But there are quite a few things that we think they should work on. The interior quality and the plastics, the features like adding a panoramic glass roof, that would be nice. They could also improve on the panel gaps on the outside and the alignment of the doors. Those are things that, yeah, they can improve on right from the factory to come out with a much better vehicle. But the one thing they really need to sort out is the pricing of this vehicle. Because at 1.621 million plus 888 pesos, it is quite pricey. And it puts it between two very strong vehicles in the market. That would be the Honda HRV in top spec trim, which is at 1.598 million. And then you have the Corolla Cross in hybrid trim at just a little bit more than this. Okay, rock, hard place, me. You really have to love it, to like it, and get it. 